Uh, okay, thank you uh, everyone for joining me this afternoon. Um, my name is Chris Mooney and I'm with Eurotherm by Schneider Electric. Uh, I'm the uh, engineered solutions uh, department sales manager. Um, today, the uh, topic that we're going to be discussing is the uh, EcoStructure uh, smart factory uh, environment. This is really a continuation of two previous technical sessions. Uh, my colleagues uh, Peter Sherwin and Joe Clark presented during the technical sessions yesterday. Uh, Peter uh, with his discussion on the, the practical role of IoT or Internet of Things solutions uh, in the heat treatment environment. Uh, and Joe with his discussion just on changing trends uh, in the industry. Um, what we're going to look at now is the, the role of uh, the implementation of Schneider Electric's EcoStructure platform uh, and, and where that can fit uh, within the, the, the implementation of these IoT or Internet of Things uh, solutions. So the, the three kind of key pieces that we're, we'll talk about uh, now uh, will be the EcoStructure platform itself, um, a little about heat treat modernization, uh, and then plant connectivity improvements, uh, and, and these all sort of feed back to the EcoStructure platform. Uh, for those of you who might be from the gear side, uh, while we, we do talk about uh, heat treatment assets, uh, in, in reality, uh, this is a, a manufacturing plant solution. So it's not really necessarily specific to heat treatment and can be applied in a, a variety of, of different production assets and production environments. So I've said the word ecostructure a couple of times now, um, and so what that really means is uh, ecostructure is the, the crossing point between OT, operational technology, um, so that, those are your production assets, those are your heat treatment assets, those are your control systems, your smart monitors, smart sensors in a, in a, a production environment. So it's the crossroads between OT and IT, your uh, information technology in the plant. Um, and how you can leverage uh, the, the joining of those two um, types of technology uh, to achieve actual value and, and actual potential from uh, the IoT or Internet of Things as, as you, you hear uh, more and more frequently. So the three areas that we're going to touch on specifically are uh, the EcoStructure Power Monitoring Expert Platform, uh, the EcoStructure uh, Machine Advisor, uh, and then the EcoStructure Augmented Operator. So the first thing that we look at is the EcoStructure Power Monitoring Expert. Uh, this is essentially uh, a cloud-based or a locally hosted uh, power and energy management and monitoring platform. So this is not necessarily specific to just a particular kind of energy. This is not just an electrical energy solution. While Eurotherm is a uh, provider manufacturer of smart SCR power technology for electrically heated systems, um, this actually pulls in what's called wages data, or water, air, gas, electric, and steam. So we provide a dashboard uh, platform with uh, energy management tools uh, to, pre to be able to uh, uh, provide insights and, and provide dashboards and trends for multiple processes within a plant environment and then multiple plants as well as the system scales up. Um, it can be used while uh, w one of the core uh, functions and core expertise areas of Eurotherm is SCR technology uh, for electrically heated uh, processes. Um, so we, we have the ability to offer uh, power factor monitoring, not just at the process level, but power factor monitoring across the whole plant. So that's the entire distribution chain leading to that heat treat asset or that production asset. Um, and we also have the ability to monitor peak demand levels within a plant. So if you're uh, in, a, in a, an energy intensive uh, production capability, uh, energy intensive production environment, and you've, uh, you've got peak demand um, uh, caps, maybe from your utility, uh, we, we've got the uh, option to monitor 
uh, and provide insights into uh, that on both a process level and a plant level. And finally, we offer this with this platform the capability of uh, energy benchmarking to uncover uh, opportunities for continuous improvement uh, practices within the plant uh, to look for areas of cost savings. So there are sort of three key initiatives that you can in, in look into when it comes to uh, the Power Monitoring Expert platform. So first, you can, you can analyze exactly how much energy uh, is being consumed by various load types. And again, energy is not just electrical. This is gas, this is steam, this is water, um, this is uh, um, uh, uh, electricity as well. And so we can, we can provide an analysis and, and monitoring of how much energy is being consumed by various load types. And what this does is really opens up uh, the, the possibility of focusing on specific areas within a plant for energy conservation initiatives. We can compare the efficiency of energy usage across different assets, across different pieces of production equipment, and then across different plants um, so that you have benchmarks of good performing assets, poor performing assets, and so that you can use those again for continuous improvement plant initiatives uh, to be able to bring the overall quality and efficiency of a particular line up. And finally, if you're looking at retrofitting equipment, and maybe that's implementing a, a, a new, more modern power supply for uh, an electrically heated process, and you want to understand the difference between the pre-retrofit energy efficiency and energy consumption and the post-retrofit energy efficiency and energy consumption, um, this gives you a methodology for tracking the performance over time and giving you analysis to really gain some, uh, some useful insights and, and uh, to really allow you to calculate a true ROI on that investment. So how is that implementation actually done? Um, it starts at the bottom layer with connected products. And a, a connected product uh, can be anything from a, uh, a smart power relay, a smart power meter, to an intelligent SCR power control, uh, to smart flow meters, uh, sensors placed around a plant, a PLC itself, a, a control system or a SCADA system, anything with an OPC uh, backbone. Um, which then feeds data up to the edge control level, and that's where the power monitoring expert platform itself lives. Um, that's where you have access to your dashboards uh, through web interfaces. Um, and then that information feeds up into a host of cloud uh, uh, analysis capabilities like the Power Advisor. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and, and through that, uh, regular reports. Uh, emails on uh, changes in efficiency, et cetera, uh, are, are generated. So next we look at uh, the EcoStructure Machine Advisor, uh, which is a, uh, in the implementation that we're discussing today, is an OEE uh, platform. And if you're unfamiliar with OEE, uh, that stands for Overall Equipment Effectiveness, which is a, um, a metric for understanding asset utilization in a plant. And again, we're using the word asset. Doesn't necessarily specifically apply to heat treatment assets. If you're here from the gear side, could be any one of the uh, production units that you may be running in your plant. So what the OEE platform allows you to do is to increase your operational performance of a particular asset by giving you accurate information on how that equipment is performing with regard to downtime, uh, efficiencies, etc. There are two factors that the OEE solution uh, uh, provides. The first is understanding utilization and tracking utilization for an individual asset. And then the second is uh, taking a step beyond utilization and understanding the OEE, or overall equipment effectiveness, uh, where that's applicable. Not every production line requires that level of detail. So the utilization and monitoring which can be used on practically any asset in a plant environment, provides you with the ability to monitor and track uh, over time the history of the operation of that asset. So we're talking about understanding uptime. We're talking about understanding downtime. 
and we're talking about understanding unplanned downtime, so process interruptions, and then classifying, uh, hopefully in an automated process, the various reasons for that unplanned downtime. And as time progresses, as production time progresses, and you have these unplanned downtime events, these things are captured, periods of time are attributed to them, and then reports are generated to help you understand, well, I've been running for seven days, and I've got one particular production line, which across that seven days has been down for 10 hours, cumulatively, in an unplanned fashion. And so here are some classifications and some reasons as to why those downtime events happened, which really opens up the ability for uh, quality teams, plant engineering teams, process engineering teams, to implement continuous improvement plans to figure out what those downtime reasons are and how to correct them so they stop contributing to the inefficiencies in your production environment. But to take it a step further, we, we look at also tracking OEE. So if step one was tracking utilization, step two is tracking OEE, which takes that utilization and expands it to include two other factors as well. So if we have utilization, uh, which is the ratio of our uptime to downtime and unplanned downtime. We also have performance, which is our ratio of actual production speed to planned production speed. And then we have a quality metric, which is our ratio of actual produced units to planned produced units to give a quality percentage. Those three factors are brought into a calculation to resolve a percentage and that is called the OEE percentage on a piece of indivi individual asset or piece of equipment. The OEE percentage, universally, we, we say 80%. If an, a piece of equipment is operating at an OEE percentage of 80%, that's a decent uh, efficiency level. Below that, that's probably caused to trigger some kind of event to investigate exactly what's causing those metrics to drop. The third platform that we're going to look at is the Augmented Operator Advisor. This platform is maybe a, a, a little more futuristic. Um, you see this more in, um, in uh, personal devices than you do industrial devices today. But this is uh, a, an augmented reality platform which gives you the ability to superimpose real-time data over a virtual environment. So that's sort of like if you, if you think about uh, that, that movie Minority Report where the guy's kind of you know, moving around virtual objects uh, to do searches and things like that. It's, it's like that only it's, it's in a plant environment. Um, and so this, this is a platform that's designed to aid and assist operators in performing their jobs. Um, this improves efficiency of operations and maintenance by reducing the time that it takes for operations and maintenance staff to find the information that's relevant to the task they are performing. Um, and it reduces operator errors because in fact a well-designed augmented reality system uh, will step-by-step -step guide an operator through the process they are trying to perform. And whether that's a maintenance process, whether that's changing the oil in a, 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 an oil pump, whatever that, that maintenance practice may be, a well-designed augmented reality system uh, can provide step-by-step -step guidance on precisely how to do that so you can take a, a brand new maintenance person, hand them their virtual device, and then send them into the field to perform uh, a task. So it's designed to improve efficiency by providing uh, immediate access to relevant data in the field. What does that mean? Well, um, in a well-designed augmented operator system, uh, we have uh, the ability to upload schematics, upload data sheets, upload maintenance procedures, so that a user standing with their tablet, scanning over a piece of equipment, seeing that a particular uh, maintenance activity needs to be performed, um, is given the information right there relevant to them as they're performing that task. Um, it reduces the time and cost of operations and maintenance um, in, by making that information, the, the live process information, available outside of a control room. So just think standing in a plant floor, holding up your tablet, scanning around the floor and having pop-up information to say, well, I, I'm running a, 
a recipe on this piece of equipment and I can just see very quickly in front of me that you know there's 10 minutes left in that dwell cycle before this this recipe is going to end um, but in order to achieve these sorts of uh, uh, IOT based solutions uh, it requires a well-developed uh, IP backbone on the plant floor so what does that mean you need to uh, have the ability and the the control products and the sensors and uh, the the IO devices in the field um, typically connected to an Ethernet network uh, to be brought into a SCADA environment um, with, or an OPC server to have this data funneled uh, to the appropriate application whether that's the power monitoring application um, whether it's the augmented operator uh, application or the OEE application um, the last Thing that we're going to take a quick look at is the advent of the merging of business systems and plant systems. So as uh, the IoT environment uh, uh, becomes more prevalent in the manufacturing environment, um, the same thing is taking over in business, uh, in the, the business process systems, in, in an e, uh, a client, your, your ERP systems, um, in your workflow systems. Um, so we are increasingly offering the capability to do things like uh, uh, working with Plex. Plex is a, a cloud-based ERP system um, where you can take a, 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 an order received by a customer, entered into the ERP system, and automatically have part numbers referencing recipe numbers downloaded into uh, our edge control systems. Um, so in the world of heat treatment, for example, we might have IQ furnaces, we might have vacuum furnaces um, where uh, the, the Eurotherm control system acts as an edge device in that case where it's a seamless connection between the ERP doing part number tracking, recipe tracking, etc. downloading recipe data directly into a control system uh, and usually that's done through in, in our case uh, uh, utilizing a, a, a Kepware driver uh, with Kepware as an OPC server. Um, this is just a, a, a quick tr trip through some of our um, IoT solutions. I would encourage you, if, if anything that I've uh, talked about up here on the stage today is, is interesting to you, uh, we're just down there in booth uh, 1213 uh, where we've got all of these platforms running as uh, live demos. Uh, I would encourage you to come down, uh, check them out. We'd be happy to step you through how they work, how they operate, and, uh, and tell you a little more about the, uh, the value that they can bring to your, uh, your environment. So thank you very much, and uh, I'd like to open the floor to any questions. All right. Thank you.